being your best with Trey Johnson. Changing the world, one thought at a time. Hello, my name is Trey Johnson and I just want to welcome you to the show today, Being Your Best with Trey Johnson. And I know you have a lot of options. You could be watching a lot of other programs, but I want to encourage you to stay dialed in for the next few minutes that we're together. We're going to get in and we're going to talk about the importance of praise. I know that there are things in your life, there are things in my life that we can position ourselves for God to be drawn to our situation. That's what praise does. You know, it says that God is attracted to our praise. Praise, it helps our countenance, it helps our mindset, it helps our attitude. Praise is, is what sets us up to overcome whatever we're facing in life. And, and it's more than just something we do at church or something we do every once in a while. God wants it to be a habit. He wants it to be a lifestyle. You can track and watch David's life and Daniel's life and Moses' life and people that had a habit of praising and thanking and worshiping God. God had a habit of showing up for them and putting His super on their natural. So I wanna encourage you, get your Bible, get your iPad, your notepad, whatever it is, and let's take notes. I want you to see from God's Word how praise helps us, how it can change our life, and how it positions us to attract God into our situations. I'll talk to you here real soon. Deuteronomy 28. Verse 47, 48 in the Amplified. It says, Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joyfulness of mind and heart and gratitude for the abundance of all with which he has blessed you, therefore you shall serve your enemies. I want to read that again. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joyfulness of mind and a heart and gratitude for the abundance of all with which he has blessed you, therefore you shall serve your enemies. I've served the enemy. I do not want to give him the time of day. I do not want to serve the enemy. So you see how praise and thanksgiving, it helps us. It helps our mind. It helps our heart. It helps our countenance. It helps our words. It, it just helps us. Say it, it helps us. But complaining hinders us. Complaining hurts us. I was doing this leadership teaching a few weeks ago for this company, and we were talking about culture killers, you know, what, what, what destroys the culture. And, and I was talking about no BCD, no blaming, no complaining, and no being defensive, no BCD, somebody that comes in and they're just bad body language, you know, well, what are you doing? I'm just believing God. You know, kind of Eeyore and Winnie the Pooh, remember that? Well, just... Well, I don't know what else we're going to do, but just pray. No bad body language. No complaining. You know what sucks that faith out of the environment? Complaining. Griping. It's time for us to grow up and get a hold of ourselves and make a decision. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise will continually come out of my mouth. Why? Because he's worthy. Why? Because I know he's working on my behalf. Why? Because I know this too will pass. Why? Because I know God cannot lie. Thank you, Lord. Say it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I encourage you to go through your house and look at your underwear if you wear them and say, thank you, Lord, and look at your food pantry and, and say, thank you, Lord, and, and look at your spouse and your kids instead of looking at what they're not doing, look at what they are doing and say, thank you, Lord. Let's do it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise and thanksgiving, it, it helps us. Say it, it helps me. How are we doing? Am I a thankful person, appreciative person, grateful person? Praise and thanksgiving, it helps magnify the Lord. Psalms 35, verses 26 and 27. It says, let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion who rejoice at my hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor who exalt themselves against me. But notice he shifts right here. Notice he switches. He says, but let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. 
Let the Lord be magnified. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Let the Lord be magnified. Remember the word magnify means make bigger, make stronger, make greater, make more significant. Let the Lord be magnified who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. So if he takes prosperity or pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, how much more does it please him to prosper his kids? God doesn't get pleasure out of seeing his kids being behind. God doesn't get pleasure out of seeing his kids being under and being defeated and there's no way out. God takes pleasure, say it, pleasure, in the prosperity of us, his children. Let the Lord be magnified when you prosper. Let the Lord be magnified when you win. Let the Lord be magnified when your accounts are overflowing. Let the Lord be magnified when you went from lost to found. Let the Lord be magnified when you went from sick to healed. Let the Lord be magnified when you went to being a complainer to being a person that was thankful and appreciative. Let the Lord be magnified when people look at you and they say, I knew you before Jesus and I know you now, and there must be a God. Let the Lord be magnified. I'm telling you, when people look at my wife and they look at me, they say, okay, there's something about God. I know that you couldn't do this on your own. <laughs> let the Lord be magnified. Say it, let the Lord be magnified. Is that your heart? Is that your mindset? God, I just praise you and I thank you. And it just begins to attract the presence of God. See, praise is, is progressive. Praise keeps you possessing the promises. Praise puts you in a position, not just here. We should praise God here. But when you're by yourself and nobody's around, do you ever take time just to drop down on your knees and just begin to praise God? And when, when you don't know how the bills are going to be paid, God, I just praise you that you support supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. When all hell has come against your family and you just begin to say, thank you, Lord, your word says that I've shared the truth with them and they will come out of the hands of the enemy. God, I just praise you and thank you. See, praise begins to paint the promises of God on your heart so you begin to see from in here what God has promised you. Because faith says, I receive what Jesus has done and because it's a gift, I say, Thank you. Thank you that I'm healed. Thank you that I'm delivered. Thank you that I'm redeemed. Thank you that I'm forgiven. Thank you that I'm cleansed by the blood. Thank you. Say it. Thank you. But see, the, the power isn't activated and, and, until we, we step, until we act upon the word. Is his praise continually, continually coming out of my mouth? Am I allowing the thanksgiving and praise to magnify who God is. That yes, this is what the doctor said, but you said by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed and I praise you and thank you. While your body is in pain, while, while you don't know how things are going to work out, you latch hold to the word and you just begin to say, thank you, thank you that you took my infirmity and bore my sickness and by your stripes I am healed. I'm not going to be healed, I'm healed. Praise you and thank you. Say it, thank you. Psalms 40, verse 16. It says, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. I will praise the name of God with a song. Can you sing? Now, notice he didn't say everybody should get a microphone. He did say everybody should sing. He's not looking for pitch. He's looking for heart. Say, thank you, Lord. He says, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. I will magnify. How does God become bigger? How does, maybe, maybe I just know God as my Savior but I don't know him as healer. Well, when I begin to thank him and I go over the scriptures concerning healing, he begins to become bigger. He becomes stronger compared to this sickness and disease compared to my God. This is easy for my God. And I look at the, the accounts that are due or the lack or whatever it is. And I look and I say, compared to the size of my God, that is easy. It's easy for God to get the money to me. It's easy for God to heal this tumor. It's easy for God to heal that pain. Somebody's being healed by pain. 
pain in their eyes. You've been having pain that comes up right here under your eyeballs. And the healing power of God is saturating that right now. And it's because our eyes are being upon him. I magnify my God with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, that I'm delivered and I'm free. Thank you. Thank you. Say it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's an individual here that's listening that your family has dealt with uh, the tarot cards and just look straight ahead. I'm not here to embarrass anybody, but we are here for freedom and truth and deliverance. Uh, I don't know, a month ago or so, I was speaking at this event and this lady come up to me and I was teaching on the power of the blood of Jesus. Revelations 12, 10, 11, we overcome by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony. And this lady had been addicted to drugs for 40 years. And she come up and I began to pray over her. And as I began to pray over her, she starts swaying back and forth like this. And I just laid my hands upon her like this. And I'm just, just, just praying whatever the Spirit tells me. But all of a sudden I could tell, boy, her countenance changed. The intensity of her changed. And I was just breaking the generational curses by the blood. See, the devil hates the power of the blood of Jesus. He hates the Word of God. He hates the name of Jesus, but I like shoving it right up his nose. And all of a sudden, she goes from here, and there's this big pole that's right here. And I mean, this lady, just, this, it was the devil, just grabbed her and started, this, she just started lunging to this side. So I grabbed her, and I put me in front of her, between her and the pole, and just commanded to break the power of the tarot card. And I just said, there's witchcraft in your family, and I break the power of the addiction by the blood of Jesus. And, and I'm just asking God to restructure her DNA and her organ. And she had been on drugs for 40 years, and that night God delivered her completely. And it's been a, close to a month now, no jonesing, no, uh, I know some of you are too holy to understand what that means, but I mean, she's been, she's been free with no side effects for over a month now, and we've been teaching her how to stay free. Because whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. And when I was talking about thanking God and magnifying God, there's an individual in here that there's been some form of witchcraft in your family through the lines. And today that power is broken. And the, the way to stay free is keep magnifying God. The way to stay free is keep thanking God for your freedom. Because you're the forerunner of changing the direction of your family. But you can't play with it. you got to make a decision like David. I will praise the the Lord at all times. I will let his praise and thanksgiving continually come out of my mouth. I will say it. I will. See, praise and thanksgiving helps us magnify the goodness of God. And it shrinks the tactics of the enemy. I'm not saying they're not real. I'm not saying the pain's not real. I'm not saying the lack's not real. I'm not saying it's not in your face. But in order for us to walk in victory, there's a shift that has to take place because praise, it helps us. It helps our countenance. It helps our mind. It helps our heart. It makes us strong, but it magnifies God. How big is God to you? I've got to ask myself, okay, yeah, I, 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 this is a big situation that I'm dealing with, but compared to my God, compared to my God, I'm not talking about some religious God. I'm not talking about your bumper sticker God. I'm not talking about your genie in the bottle God. I'm not talking about your lucky rabbit's foot. I'm talking about Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth. How big is he to you? I'm talking about the one who held the Red Sea back up by the breath, just the breath that come out of his nostrils that said he congealed the waters. I'm talking about the God, Jehovah Jireh, the provider who sees and provides the healer. I'm talking about Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. How big is he to you? How do I get God? How do I get his heart? How do I get his mind? How do I get his super to come up on my natural? How do I get things to change? How do I tap in? How do I stay in this place of faith when I feel like all hell is trying to take me out? Because it is. Thank you. Right in the middle of the pain. Thank you. Right in the middle of the destruction. Thank you. Why are you saying thank you? Because he's bigger than your problem. But it's a choice. It's a decision. 
that this is what I'm going to do and this is how I'm going to live when things are good and not good, when I have abundance, when I don't have anything. Thank you. Say it. Thank you. Go with me to 1 Samuel 17. And we're getting ready to be done. 1 Samuel 17. And when I get to thinking about magnifying God and I get to thinking about the goodness of God. I mean, David, he wrote most of the Psalms. You talk about a warrior. Years ago, the Lord says, Trey, a, a, a worshiper is a warrior. We want to learn to operate in the things of God. You learn how to have a lifestyle of praise and thanksgiving and, and worship. And, and you see David, who he was being faithful, tending his father's sheep. And his dad says, I want you to go to the battlefield. You know the story, 1 Samuel 17. Go to the battlefield. I want you to take the 10 blocks of cheese. I want you to take the 10 loaves. I want you to go see how your brothers are doing and, and take them a token and bring a token back. And, and he gets there. And whenever he gets there and he's talking to his brothers and he's talking to the other people that were in the army and all of a sudden Goliath comes out because the children of Israel are on one side. You know, the Philistines are on the other side and, and Goliath comes out and it says, that he begins to defy the armies of God. Defy means he begins to shame the armies of God. He begins to tear down. He begins to belittle them. He begins to intimidate them. And as you read it, it you, you can see how the children of Israel that were afraid and they were, they were bunkered up, you know, and hunkered up and, and they would describe, man, his spear beam is this much and it weighs this and he's, you know, nine, ten feet tall and he's huge and he's, and they would describe the problem and they would describe a detail, man, this guy, he is just intense and, and David shows up and he hears Goliath saying this and he begins to look around and he begins to question, how come somebody hasn't shut this guy up yet? How some, this guy's coming out and he's not only talking about our God, but he's talking about your mama. He's talking about, you know, that your hair's funny. He's talking about, I mean, he's, he's shaming you and trying to tear you down. And then his brothers get upset and everything. But David, it is three different times. He's saying, I don't get why somebody hasn't stood up to this guy. Let's look at this in 1 Samuel 17, verse 32. Then David said to Saul, now this is a miracle in itself because you think about it, David had an audience with the king. And this was, I mean, this was the military. Very orderly, very organized. There was structure, there was rank. But David, he passes the Marines, he passes the SEALs, he passes the Green Beret. I mean, he passes all of them, and he's standing in the presence of the king. This is where we pick it up right here. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Let no man's heart fail fail because of the enemy. Remember in John 14, verse 1, verse 27, Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Jesus said, in the last days, many people's hearts will fail. Yes, from heart attacks, but he's talking about our spiritual heart. He said, don't let your heart, don't you take responsibility for your heart. See, I can't control what you do, but I can't control what I do. I can't control the way you think, the way you talk, the way you believe, but I can control the way I think, the way I believe, the way I talk, my expectation. And, and David says, don't, don't let any man's heart fail because of the enemy. I'm here to tell you today, get a hold to yourself. Don't you let your heart fail because of that doctor's report. Don't you let your heart fail because of financial situation. Don't you let your heart fail because of the family situation. Do not let your heart fail. See, faith talks different than everybody else talks. You can sense faith. You can, you can perceive faith. It talks differently. Say it, it talks differently. 2 Corinthians 4.13, it says, The spirit of faith believes... And the spirit of faith speaks according to what is written. The spirit of faith believes and the spirit of faith speaks. So David says, don't let any man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, you're not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are a youth and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took the lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and I struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. 
And when he arose against me, I caught it by its beard, and I struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will, he will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. Notice how David never called him a giant. Notice how David never described how big he was. He never called him Goliath. Goliath meant that he was a champion. He never acknowledged. He never sit there and focused on, on the strength of the giant. He just said, this uncircumcised Philistine. And he kept his eyes on God. And he says, don't you let any man's heart fail. The same way God showed up to me in the pasture, the same way he showed up whenever I got that lion and I got the bear and I struck him and I took back the lamb, he will. Not he might. Not we're going to pray and see what happens. He says he will. The same way God showed up for me then, he's going to show up for me now. The same way he answered my prayer then, he's going to answer my prayer now. He will deliver me from the hand of the enemy. He will. Not he might. Not I hope he will. Not I wish things are going to turn out. No, it will turn out for my good. He will. Say it. He will. He will. He will. He will. He has. So he will. He will. He will. Yeah, give God praise. He will deliver me from the hand of the enemy. Well, how? And I don't know. And but, and get your butt out the way and stay focused on he will. Notice how David spent the time praising, worshiping, thanking God out with the lion and the bear and the sheep. Notice he said, you're faithful servant. In other words, I was faithful. Proverbs 28, 20 says, a faithful person abounds with blessing. Proverbs 13 says, a faithful person is an ambassador of health and healing. Faithfulness is huge. Faithfulness to the house, faithfulness to God, faithfulness to his word, faithfulness, say it, faithfulness. He says, you're faithful servant. In other words, he's saying, I'm in the process every day. And today I'm going to be thankful and grateful and I'm going to keep my eyes on the bigness of God even when it seems impossible. I'm going to magnify the God. I'm going to magnify God with my thanksgiving. I'm going to let him be stronger to me. I'm going to let him be bigger to me. I'm going to stay focused on the answer and not the problem. And he will deliver me. Say it, he will. 1 Samuel 17 verse 41. It says, so the Philistine came and began drawing near to David, and the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good looking. So the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Now, now notice, notice how the enemy always tries to talk to you. Lack has a voice. Sickness has a voice. The curse has a voice. Notice Saul said. Notice the Philistine said. But notice David did not just sit there and take it. How did he overcome first? He opened up his mouth. So the Philistine is saying one thing, and then David said, David said to the Philistine, you come to me with the sword and with the spear and with the javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord, a host, the God of the armies of Israel, who you have defied. Maybe your family isn't in the condition that you want it in, but you have a promise from God. Say thank you. Thank you. There's individuals here that you've been dealing with. Uh... Holy Spirit, help me describe it. It's, it's like, a, like just a severe pain going across the front part of your stomach. And it's like your, your intestines are like, like there's a blockage there, like there's a, there's a pain there, there's a hindrance there. Who, who is that? Would you just slip your hand up? You've been having that pain in your stomach. Who is that? Just, just put your hand right there on your stomach. Put your hand on your stomach. 
Now, right now, in the name of Jesus, I command that blockage to dissipate. And I release the healing power of God to flow into that individual's body right now. And I command things that are out of alignment to come into alignment. And I speak to the root of this thing and I curse it in the name that is above every name. And I declare from this moment forward that stomach is at peace and things begin to flow accurately and clearly and easily in the mighty name of Jesus. And church, what do we say? Thank you. Thank you, Father. Heads about eyes closed. If you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and personal Savior, if you were to die today, you don't know where you will spend eternity. I'm not asking you if you've gone to church a lot of times. I I'm asking you to look into your heart. 1 John 5 says, when a person receives Jesus, they know that they have eternal life. They don't guess, they don't wish, they don't wonder. They know, they know. When you look into your heart right now, do you have that knowing that you will spend eternity with God? Can you recall a moment or time in your life when you yourself called upon the name of Jesus and you settled where you're gonna spend eternity? You have that knowing nobody can talk you out of your relationship with God. If you don't have that knowing, if you can't recall that moment or time in your life, would you make today that day? You say, how can I make today that day? It's very simple, heads bowed, eyes closed. We're all gonna pray a very simple prayer together and we're gonna do it out loud. And as we do it out loud, I want you to believe in your heart these words that you're saying. And I want you to declare with your mouth like your eternal destiny depends upon it because it does. And according to God's word, right where you're sitting or standing, the life of God comes into you and you become a recreated person on the inside. You, you come from darkness into light. You receive the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus and you become born into the family of God, heads bowed, eyes closed. Let's pray this prayer together and let's do it out loud as a family. I want the people that are doing this for the very first time, I want them confident in the prayer that we're praying. I want them to know that we're in this with them. Church, can we pray this prayer together? Can we just say, Father God, today is the day that I make the decision to believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead to give me life. And right now, I accept that life. And I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart, to be my Lord, to be my Savior. And according to God's Word, I am forgiven. I am cleansed. I am a recreated person. I'm born again. I'm saved. And I can be certain that I'll spend eternity with Almighty God.